Nobody wants to do research. Nobody seems to even enjoy doing research anymore. People just want to listen to commentary on a certain topic. And he who sounds prettier and looks prettier, generally they side with that person. And once you side and take an opinion, it requires 10 times more evidence to move somebody off of an opinion than to form the opinion in the first place. I think that was Tesla that said that. But we're talking about what's going on with the climate, the state of the climate. Um, amazing things happen in Greenland. The Greenland's very important because as Greenland goes, so does the Northern Hemisphere go. And ice core records and geology records pretty much indicate that Greenland is sensitive to to temperatures and ocean temperatures and air temperatures. And it shows, the history and the data shows that when the temperature raises just a small amount, Greenland loses all of its ice. So Greenland is very, very brittle with respect to its ice. And what they've just discovered, uh, 50 brand new lakes overnight new lakes 50 of them a lot of them underneath the surface ice water pooling underneath the surface ice 50 lakes and that's the ones they didn't miss it's probably higher count than that and we tried to warn you the very first time we got drift that greenland was going to lose its surface ice once again like it did during solar maximum we we let you know and we're staying on top of the story because everybody wants to confuse you there are many hypotheses on why all this is happening and of course people who say global warming they blow it the minute they mention carbon dioxide enter somebody i respect guy mcpherson who's who's traveled the world talking about the Al Gore kind of stuff and the thing that he brings to the table is a lot of data a lot of facts and there is no doubt the globe is warming but you can always tell that there's something wrong with a scientist when he discounts fact or when he excludes fact And I don't know why Guy McPherson is excluding certain facts from his database and his data sets. And it it calls into question his objectivity. And and I don't think it calls into question his heart. But that's my personal opinion. Because I kind of like feel his heart. He's really worried about what's going on. But I think he's chasing he's chasing the wrong enemy it's been proven it's been proven and that the whole solar system is warming that all the planets atmospheres are changing just even under visible light atmospheres are changing uranus neptune saturn jupiter and the moons of jupiter and saturn they're all changing So, I know that's not carbon dioxide doing that, and you know it's not carbon dioxide doing that, and Guy McPherson knows it's not carbon dioxide causing the changes in Saturn, and its atmosphere, and Uranus, and Neptune, and Jupiter. When you are involved in a climate discussion, and your scientist leaves out cosmic rays and ozone, solar radiation... Uh, you know the the state of the sun then you're you've already blown it as far as credibility when you leave out methane you've blown it you've blo- you've proven that you're not a scientist and you're a commentator and there's a big difference scientists want to know the answers commentators always have the answer and so that's why we started this channel the to find out the truths for ourselves, and that's what we do. And then we share our results with you. 
when the results are overwhelming and there's consensus on our part, th- then we are, we draw a firm and solid line in the sand and dare people to move us off that solid line. So far, the data sets just haven't moved us anywhere and has actually supported almost everything this channel has ever maintained. And and the one thing about carbon dioxide, I mean, if you just go to, let's say, Mauna Loa atmospheric carbon dioxide, you even go to the methane, you'll see big spikes, very regular, almost interval-like, harmonic-like, in terms of spikes in valleys, peaks and valleys, in terms of concentrations of these gases. The problem with carbon dioxide, and, and methane too, but... But the problem with carbon dioxide is that, because that's the one they're blaming, is that when it's cooler, you absorb carbon dioxide. When the oceans are warmer, they release carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide releases can be the result of warming and not the cause of warming. That's a huge problem. Because no matter how many data sets you're throwing in my face, no matter how many global temperatures you throw in my face and try to tie it to carbon dioxide, you have no proof what came first, the chicken or the egg. Ice core data suggests that we've had much higher carbon dioxide in our atmosphere in the past and life was still flourishing. And the apocalyptic wildfires in December, I mean, that's not even fire season. And so what they have to do, though, is pretty much make up a BS excuse as to why these fires are happening in December. They leave out aluminum oxide residues on the leaves. Aluminum oxide is a fire retardant, will turn a leaf into a match. Nobody talks about the incredible ground temperature of 185 degrees right now. Nobody will talk about the incredible temperature and energy coming off the sun and won't even show you L-I-S-I-R-D satellites that measure the sun's energy. So the sun is our driver of climate. The, the sun is the driver of all the planet's climate. It is is the granddaddy it is the zeus of weather without the sun there would be nothing here and there would be no climate so one of the course excuses they give you for apocalyptic wildfires in december which never used to happen by the way never uh they're happening now every winter the the fact of the matter is they're saying, well, we had a wet spring, or we had a wet fall, or we had a wet summer. Now, wait a minute. Since when does wet anything conducive to apocalyptic, record-breaking, fast-moving, incredibly hot wildfires? Wet anything does not create wildfires. It actually suppresses wildfire. Well, you have more fuel. Well, you have more fuel. Well, you know, you can wet down a pile of hay, throw gasoline on it, throw a match on it, and the hay will go out. All right, well, you need more hay. No, what causes apocalyptic wildfires is not the amount of fuel. It's not like there's more trees in Yosemite than there was 10 years ago. There may be deader trees and dire trees excuse me, drier trees. There may be bark beetles that make the trees very, very brittle and dry. But you can't say there's more trees in the forest, therefore we have more forest fires. That that logic breaks down the minute you start looking at it. And then you look at the historical data. We've had wet springs, wet summers, wet, 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 throughout the years, throughout the decades. Never, never have we seen wildfires like we're seeing today. And so Guy McPherson 
Well, I don't know whether his his expertise doesn't involve the sun, doesn't involve solar radiation, doesn't involve cosmic rays, but we've showed a direct correlation between neutral helium and tropospheric temperatures. A direct correlation. It mimics the correlation shown by carbon dioxide and temperature. But the problem is, is you can't tell me that the increased heat, the increased tropospheric temperature is causing the solar system to make more helium. So the correlation between helium and temperature is a lot tighter and a lot more convincing than the correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature. Why? Because hot temperatures will increase your carbon dioxide. But hot temperatures do not increase the amount of helium in your solar system and the amount of helium out by Mars. That's not related to what's going on here. What's going on here is related to the helium that's coming through.